Hi, I'm Russell and you're part of New Life at Home today, Sunday the 14th of November. Now we had planned to be gathered today for picnic church at our church building, but the wet, soggy ground has uh, caused us to postpone that. We'll try again next Sunday. Uh, so New Life at Home today, is, uh, it will be for everyone. And we're gonna be continuing reading in the book of Zechariah, just as we had planned to do. Now, one of the ways that you can keep up to date with everything that's going on with uh, New Life is through our weekly newsletter, uh, which is sent out through our church uh, website. But to know when that's there and up to date, uh, you need to be on our email list. And so if you're someone local uh, to New Life in Gungahlin, I encourage you to visit discovernewlife.church forward slash get connected. Put your details in there so that they can, uh, 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 you can be included in that information, particularly in the coming weeks as we've got opportunities to be gathering. And you might be somebody who's new in the area, looking to be part of a church and is not yet connected in a physical gathering with new life. We would love to include you in the coming weeks. As a church, we exist to help one another and the world uh, to discover real and lasting hope in Jesus. And uh, we're going to be uh, touching in on that hope today as we keep reading through the Old Testament book of Zechariah. It's a book that points us to a real and lasting hope that we have in Jesus. For God's Old Testament people in Zechariah's time, about 500 years before Jesus came, they were living in a disillusioned and a disappointed uh, kind of way. And God's message to them uh, lifted their eyes to what God was doing. Um, to build his kingdom. And we are part of that today as well with God and knowing his sure and certain promise of eternity with him. And so with that in mind, let's be before God and present with him, aware of what's going in on our heart and asking God to speak to us today through his word. Please pray with me. Our great God and our loving heavenly father, we thank you that you love us and that you are in control of all things. And as we are aware of your presence with us this morning, we want to be aware of what is in our own hearts and minds. At the start of a new day, we thank you for your goodness, your love and your care of us, giving restful, safe sleep through the night in warm places. But as soon as we pray that, God, we are aware of those who are unsettled, unrested, and not in safe places. God, we know that you know each one of those people. And according to your grace and love for your world, may you lead them to restful and safe places. God, we thank you for the warmth of family and friendship and church community. But as we pray that, we're aware of tension and conflict and distancing. And so God, in our hearts and lives, in the relationships round about us, please lead us by your spirit to forgiveness to peace, to warmth, to love. Please make us like you. God, we thank you that as a church, we do have opportunities ahead to be gathered together with one another. But today we feel some sadness and disappointment of not being able to gather for picnic church. God, keep us looking forward to opportunities to gather and may you keep stirring in us a deep longing to be gathered with you into eternity. God, we confess that some of us honestly feel relieved to not be going out today, to stay in our own home. And Father, we have lost some of our habits of gathering with others. Father, please be working in us by your spirit to help us take the next steps day by day in living as your people in the world, in keeping up our responsibilities to one another, 
to be stirred up by you in making Jesus known to the world round about us. God, our faults and failures come into our hearts and lives because of our sin, of giving into temptation. Father, we confess that we are sinners. We give into old habits. We turn to laziness rather than the good works that you have prepared for us to do. We embrace timidity rather than conviction and courage in making Jesus known. And Father, we know that you don't, don't just assess us on a performance because we could never uh, pass. But we have stood against you with our sin. We have sought to secure our own little crowns and God, from our hearts this morning, with honesty, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another. Loving Father, we thank you that you have prepared the way for us to be brought back into relationship with you. That with all the disappointment of our sin, the distancing of our sin, the coldness, the offence, the shame and the guilt that you have done everything that is needed to draw us back into right relationship, warm relationship with you through Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection to new life. And Father, stir that warmth and connectedness up in our hearts today. Help us to know and believe and hang on to the warmth of that relationship we have with you. Help us to know and be stirred up into love and good deeds because of the forgiveness that you have brought us. Father, we thank you that you make yourself known to us through your word. And thank you that you have given your spirit present with us so that we might know your word and believe your word. As we read today from Zechariah chapter 7 and 8, Help us to hear you speak. Help us to believe and obey. Stir up in our hearts ongoing repentance that we might celebrate now, looking forward to the eternal celebration around the throne of the Lord Jesus. In his name and for his glory we pray. Amen. Well, before Tim preaches uh, to us, uh, we're going to read from Zechariah chapter 7, chapter 8, uh, two long chapters. You'll find the words on the screen, uh, but if you've got your own Bible, uh, it'd be helpful to have that open as you follow along. Zechariah chapter 7, starting at verse 1. In the fourth year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, on the fourth day of the ninth month, the month of Kislev. The people of Bethel had sent Sharitza and Rigam Melech, together with their men, to entreat the Lord. By asking the priests of the house of the Lord Almighty and the prophets, should I mourn and fast in the fifth month as I have done so for many years? Then the word of the Lord Almighty came to me. Ask all the people of the land and the priests, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seven months for the past 70 years, was it really for me that you fasted? And when you were eating and drinking, were you not just feasting for yourselves? Are these not the words the Lord proclaimed through the earlier prophets when Jerusalem and its surrounding towns were at rest and prosperous and the Negev and the western foothills were settled? And the word of the Lord came again to Zechariah. This is what the Lord Almighty said. Administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly they turned their backs and covered their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit to the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. 
When I called, they did not listen. So when they called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations where they were strangers. The land they left behind them was so desolate that no one travelled through it. This is how they made the pleasant land desolate. Chapter 8. The word of the Lord Almighty came to me. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am very jealous for Zion. I am burning with jealousy for her. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city and the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each of them with cane in hand because of their age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will save my people from the countries of the east and the west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Now hear these words. Let your hands be strong so that the temple may be built. This is also what the prophets said who were present when the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord Almighty. Before that time, there were no wages for people or hire for animals. No one could go about their business safely because of their enemies, since I had turned everyone against their neighbour. But now I will not deal with the remnant of this people as I did in the past, declares the Lord Almighty. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. Just as you, Judah and Israel, have been a curse among the nations, so I will save you and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Just as I had determined to bring disaster on you and showed no pity when your ancestors angered me, says the Lord Almighty, so now I have determined to do good again to Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. These are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to each other and render true and sound judgment in your courts. Do not plot evil against each other and do not love to swear falsely. I hate all this, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord Almighty came to me. This is what the Lord Almighty says. The fasts of the fourth, fifth, seventh and tenth months will become joyful and glad occasions and happy festivals for Judah. Therefore, love, truth and peace. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Many peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will yet come and the inhabitants of one city will go to another and say, let us go at once to entreat the Lord and seek the Lord Almighty. I myself am going. And many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord Almighty and to entreat him. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In those days, ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, Let us go with you, because we have heard that God is with you. Changing circumstances can be something to celebrate. Almost 14 years ago, Kate and I got married. It was a big change uh, for both of us in our lives, but I remember being there after the wedding, celebrating with lots of family and friends. It was here in Canberra at a golf club, and I remember smiling so much that my face was sore. 
One of my favourite memories of the day was celebrating by flying around the golf course in golf carts with the bridal party. Sometimes at weddings, the photos bit can be a bit boring, but it wasn't for us as we teared around the golf course, climbing up trees, uh, taking photos and stuff like that. Marriage is something to celebrate. But there are lots of things we celebrate, aren't there? Like the new year. I wonder if you've got plans already. Uh, perhaps you're very keen to say goodbye to this year along with the year before and look ahead, hopefully, to a better year next year. Uh, we celebrate new jobs as well. Uh, we celebrate graduations. Maybe some of you are graduating uh, from high school this year uh, or primary school or college, perhaps, or university. All of these things are something to celebrate. And each example is a celebration of something now that's changed, but looks forward in joyful expectation of much more to come in the future. Well, as God's people, those who are in Christ, we have something to celebrate. Something now has changed, but there's more to come. To put it another way, what Jesus has done, what, what Jesus is doing and what Jesus will do is something to celebrate. But let's not be too quick to celebrate. In Zechariah 7 and 8, celebration is where we're heading. But notice the trajectory, the movement from mourning to celebration, from fasting to feasting. This is the journey that God takes us on this morning. Let's not be like those who in chapter 7, verse 11, refused to pay attention. We want our celebrating to be deep, to be full of purpose and, and meaning. We don't want it to be shallow and empty. And worst of all, we don't want our celebrating to be in vain. So looking now at Zechariah chapter 7, circumstances have changed for God's people. They've returned from exile to God's place, as we heard about last week, if you tuned in. And the work of rebuilding the temple is well underway. And so this group from Bethel arrive in Jerusalem with a question. It's a dilemma, really. In verse 3, one of them speaks up on behalf of the people and he says, Should I mourn and fast in the fifth month, as I have done for so many years? The fast of the fifth month marked the destruction of the temple. Now that the rebuild was well advanced, chugging along quite nicely, and, and the temple site was no longer an abandoned place that was in ruins, had things changed? Was the time for mourning over? I reckon they would have taken a simple yes or no response from the prophet Zechariah, but God's spokesperson gives them more than they bargained for. He answers with a penetrating word, a powerful word. He answers them with God's word that pierces the heart. Speaking through Zechariah, God takes Israel on this path from mourning to celebration. And he takes us along that path too. And God says, not so fast. There are deep issues you must face before you can even think about celebrating. Verse 5 and 6, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months for the past 70 years, was it really for me that you fasted? And when you were eating and drinking, were you not just feasting for yourselves? God confronts his people. The problem was not with what they were doing, but with their motivation behind it. What they called fasting was not true fasting. What they called mourning was not true mourning. Your circumstances might have changed, but your hearts haven't. That was the problem. They hadn't turned to God in repentance. 
but repentance is necessary. A lot of this is echoing what we've already heard back in chapter 1, where, where God says, return to me, turn from your evil ways. Don't be like your ancestors who wouldn't listen. See, the kind of fasting that God requires is not ultimately fasting from food. It's fasting from sin. And it's the sin of mistreating others that's highlighted here. Did you notice it as we read it before? There are commands that say, do this, verse 9, administer true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. And there are commands that say, don't do this, verse 10. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. You see, true repentance results in changed behaviour. That's what it means. Behaviour that, that reflects God's own character. True repentance flows out of love for others. Flows out in love for others, should I say. It's an all of life thing. And this is what God requires from us. Repentance isn't an optional extra. It's not an optional extra in the Christian life. Something I've noticed is how easy uh, it is to stress faith, but ignore repentance. But the reality is that faith without works is dead. Faith and repentance, you see, go together. They are, they are two sides of the same coin. Faith that is real, faith that is true, results in changed behaviour. When Jesus came proclaiming the good news, do you remember what he said? He said, repent and believe the kingdom of God has drawn near. We're called to grieve our sin, to repent, to turn back to Jesus and to line up our whole lives with Jesus and to actively live that out day by day. Have you turned to Jesus? Have you reoriented your life around him and, and his concerns? We mustn't think like much of our world does, that, that somehow we can claim for ourselves the blessings of the kingdom without first turning to the king. Repentance is necessary. Changed circumstances call for a changed life, a changed heart. And that can't happen without first mourning over our sin. But Zechariah's vision is for a time when there will be no reason to mourn, only reason to celebrate. God had judged his people for their sin, but, but judgment will not be his final word. The movement from chapter 7 into chapter 8 is one from mourning to celebration. And this change has two dimensions. Celebration has now begun, that's the first one, and secondly, celebration is not yet complete. It has now begun. Verse 3. This is what the Lord says. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city and the mountain of the Almighty will be called the holy mountain. The sense of this verse and, and the verses that follow is, is not of a God who is far away and distant from his people. It's not of a God who is passive, but of a God who is present, a God who is active, a God who's, who's begun already to restore his people, a God who's begun to bring them under his blessing and rule. There's lots for God's people to get excited about. They have God's promises to build their lives on. God says, I will. I will save you. I will bring my people back to Jerusalem. Those that have been scattered will be brought near. I will be faithful. I will be righteous. I will not treat you as your sins deserve. So many I will statements through chapter 8. The blessings of God that are, that are spoken of here, they're not, they're not distant ideals removed from the present experience of the people. 
God was already present in Zechariah's community. Jerusalem certainly wasn't filled to the brim with people, but nor was it an abandoned city in ruins anymore either. People were coming back, a blend of young and old building the temple together, the beginning of a vibrant community. They had the first taste of what was to come, the first instalment of the blessings promise, the pledge of their future inheritance, if you like. They had that now. And this was something to celebrate. Repentance, but then celebration. And it's the same for us. Jesus has died for our sins and risen to new life and he's poured his spirit into our hearts. He dwells with us now. The spirit is a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. And this is something to celebrate. And, and Paul actually invites us to celebrate this in Ephesians 1 when he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Being chosen by God, adopted into his family, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, forgiven, the slate wiped clean. All these spiritual blessings are things to celebrate and, in, and enjoy now. But even more than that, so is the work of the Spirit to change us, to transform us. You know, the longer I'm a Christian, the longer I'm in ministry, the more I realise how much mess and brokenness there is in our lives. We're far more broken than we know. And yet God is transforming us changing us to be like Jesus, especially through and using the hard stuff. So how is God changing you if you're a believer? How have you grown? Can you see a change in behaviour, a change in, in how you treat others compared to how you used to treat them? Can you identify the fruit of the Spirit in your life? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness self-control, a transformed life, however imperfect and however incomplete, is something to celebrate. It's evidence that the change from mourning to celebration has now begun. But of course, it's not yet complete, is it? We know that. And God's people knew that too. In Zechariah's day, they hadn't experienced the full reality yet of what was promised and, and nor do we today but Zechariah lifts our eyes to the real hope of what we have to look forward to he gives us this vision of where we're heading to life in all its fullness in God's kingdom and and the picture we have in verses 18 to 23 is this one redeemed people celebrating together. It's a wonderful picture. The scattered will be regathered. Fasts will become joyful and glad occasions. Festivals, it'll be a festival atmosphere. Mourning will be over and, and celebration will completely take its place. Remember the group from Bethel who came with that question, the dilemma? Their pilgrimage uh, from Bethel to Jerusalem, we can now see it in retrospect as a sign of a far greater pilgrimage to come. The pilgrimage of many peoples coming to Jerusalem to seek the Lord. This is what we have to look forward to in the new heavens and the new earth. And the high point comes in, in verse 23, this wonderful verse full of hope and expectation. Let me read it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In those days, ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, let us go with you because we have heard God is with you. God had been with the people of Israel in a special relationship with them ever since the time of Abraham. 
but it had never been for their sake only. God's plan was that all people might be blessed through them. And Zechariah looks forward to that time. He looks forward to when Jews and Gentiles would be joined together as one, to when God would be with all people. And that finds its fulfilment in the one called Emmanuel, God with us, the one perfect Israelite who says to those who believe, I will be with you till the very end of the age. And he's been with his church ever since it began. He was with the 3,000 Jews gathered in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. He's been with people from all nations and tribes and languages who've, who've joined with them in gathering, many gatherings in many places in many times, sharing in God's bless, blessings. And he's with us when we gather, reminding us that we've got something to celebrate. But perhaps you, like me, this morning, feel a sense of disappointment a sense of sadness that the gathering that we planned for Picnic Church hasn't happened because of the weather. And there's a real, there's a real sadness in this because we do know from what Zechariah is showing us here that, that gathering is at the heart of God's purposes for his people. And, and the gathering itself is, is a place where we anticipate the future heavenly gathering where we will be one people around the throne. Yet there's still something to celebrate for us this morning. This side of Jesus' death, resurrection and ascension, we're left with a repentant longing of a celebration to come. See, even in the disappointment of life in this world, in a fallen world, we, we have glimpses of God's kingdom being built among us and out from us. And so we celebrate now and into the future with repentant hearts longing for God's eternal kingdom in the new heavens and the new earth. And we do know that there will be future opportunities for us to gather as God's people again physically, celebrating together. Maybe for you, it's a time coming up for you to rediscover the joy, the joy, although not perfect, the joy of gathering and being with God's people, knowing that God is with us by his spirit. And so as you feel the sting of the cold, uh, the dreariness of the rain, although I can see out the window that it's sunny right at this moment, as you experience more disappointments to come, be attentive to what God is doing in you and among us. As you stay warm at home but miss the warmth of gathered church community, know the warmth of God's forgiveness. Keep turning to him in repentance and pray your kingdom come. Would you like to pray that prayer together that uh, Tim has just uh, alluded to? A Lord's Prayer, uh, the prayer that uh, Jesus' uh, disciples uh, taught his followers. You pray it along with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom power and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, God's word in Zechariah calls his people 
expectantly uh, to be uh, gathering. And we see in the New Testament uh, that church is a gathering. It's an assembly. And Jesus says uh, to his disciples that he will uh, build his church, uh, not just wishful thinking, uh, not a promise that they might look out to, uh, but a sure and certain thing. Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades uh, will not come over it. That's a sure and certain promise from Jesus. And so we are even, uh, we have the hope of gathering. And as the New Testament continues on, and there is the expectation and command of gathering. And so in coming weeks, uh, keep looking for opportunities for us to be gathering in life groups, uh, to be gathering with one another uh, in community and to be gathering on Sundays as we have opportunities to do uh, round about our church building and uh, God willing at the right time back into our usual meeting space in the school hall. So let's try again next Sunday uh, for Picnic Church. Now the forecast is not actually looking much better than this week so we're used to being adaptable as we go along. Next Sunday 10.30 on the grass behind uh, the church building. You'll need to do QR check-in, uh, bring a rug or a chair for you to sit on, prepare for a hat, prepare for a warm jacket. And uh, as we're gathered, uh, we will celebrate together the Lord's Supper. Uh, so bring some bread and juice so that you and your household can participate in that. Uh, we were going to be celebrating today uh, graduations of our young people who are graduating from our kids' ministry into our usual church gathering and those who are graduating from our youth ministry. And we'll hold off on that until the next time we have an opportunity to be together face-to-face. -to, -face. Uh, to keep up to date with everything that's going on, uh, look out for the church newsletter, which comes out in the second half of the week on the church uh, website, and you can receive a link to that via email uh, if you've subscribed through discovernewlife.church forward slash get connected. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining in New Life at Home today. See you soon.